Hello. Well, hello. Hello. Randall, it's nice to see you again. Yeah, nice to see you. How are you? Looks like you're uh, Rona. Oh, hello. I can't remember this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm supporting my mad scientist. <laughs> Working. Yeah. Cool. Thanks everyone for jumping in today. Um, I propose we give people come a couple more minutes to to join in. And All right, I think we're good to start and maybe it would be helpful. Um, we have 17 people here. All right, so maybe a round of introductions may not be the, the most efficient or actually maybe we can start from just one sentence, who you are and like what, what brings you here. And the context of this call is obviously the, um, the application of computer vision for uh, for diagnosis of the pulmonary fibrosis, but uh, just tell us who you are and what you brings you here in, in less than you know 15 seconds. No pressure. Maybe we can start from Randall. Uh, hi, can you hear me okay? Yep. Yeah, uh, my name is Randall Brown. I'm a retired physician. I uh, am interested in fast AI, and uh, um, I understand the fast AI course is going to restart soon, a new version of it. So uh, I'm really interested to see um, this particular work because it would be an application of testing. <clears throat> Thank you. Derek? Oops. Hi, everyone. I'm Derek Kwasi-Sokalper. So uh, I'm here because I, I want to see uh, one of the concrete uh, outcomes of, of the team. And I think the 3D visual aspect is very interesting and could be also a great engagement tool maybe to new communities outside. And my background is more into economics and impact investing. So I have a kind of transversal view of things. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Aditya Shukla. Hi. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Aditya from India. And uh, I can contribute to the development via <coughs> machine learning and MATLAB models. So I hope to contribute actively if available for a work position. 
Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Ali? Ali, hi there. Oh, no mic. Okay. Um, you can write in, in the chat. Um, Arvind? I'm also from India, same as Aditya. So I, uh, I learned uh, deep learning and I wish to apply uh, deep learning techniques for uh, image detection for this project and uh, hopefully we could get a good outcome out of it. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Bogdan? Uh, hi everyone, I'm the machine learning developer from Ukraine and I've been specializing in computer vision field, especially the segmentation field of the computer vision field. And I know that sometimes the other brain <laughs> can get a very useful insights. So I'm in this project in order to help with some advice. Maybe I notice or I know something that can improve the results rapidly. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jack? I'm Jack Park. Uh, I'm in California, and uh, I, I mostly work in, in uh, fundamentally in symbolic AI, but uh, I can work with the uh, deep learning people as well. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Chitana? We, we cannot hear you. I see that you're not muted but there is no sound. Hmm. Chitana, you, you can st still write in, in chat if uh, your mic is not working. Uh, Priya? seems like Priya just joined. So we're just going through the round of introductions and introducing um, ourselves in, in less than um, two sentences. Um, let's move to Desin. Hi. Uh, yeah, my name is Esin and I'm right now currently in Turkey, but I live in uh, California Bay Area and I spent some time on computer vision research problem but deep learning or new AI techniques are something that I am currently interested in and then trying to get more experience and would like to be do something helpful if I can if I ha can have a time of course awesome. so I have been kind of uh, not very active, I know, and I'll try to find more time in the future, hopefully. Yeah, and uh, to be honest, we didn't have much computer vision uh, applications going on, so I'm very excited because uh, a lot of people were just waiting for the perfect application of, the, of their skill sets, and, and that's the one. Um, the next one, uh, Shruti. Um, hey, guys. Um an engineering student from India and I'm interested in AI and especially the applications in biology which is why I'm here. Thank you. Saptarshi? Hello myself Saptarshi. I'm a biotech engineer by educational qualification and uh, I'm presently doing freelancing for a lot many organizations pertaining to health. And I want to contribute my skills in the area of medical science, biotechnology, immunology, and microbiology in this uh, wonderful organization called Corona. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. Um, Sukhwinder. Hello everyone, I'm Sukhwinder, can you hear me? Yep. So I'm from Nebraska Medical Center and I'm highly interested in biomarkers, which can be blood-based and imaging-based markers. And deep learning is a perspective which I'm looking forward to. Thank you. Amazing. Thanks for joining us today. Svetlana? 
Hi, uh, I'm an NLP engineer with experience in machine translation and speech recognition. And uh, so I don't have too much computer vision experience and I'm kind of interested in uh, learning a little bit more about that and seeing you know, where we can apply it here. Um, I've been involved in some other initiatives in our group, but I am a little busy. So it's gonna be a matter of seeing if I can find the right amount of time, but I hope I can contribute. Thank you, Wendy. Hi, um, I'm Vandana. I live in Seattle. Um, I'm a full stack software engineer transitioning to AI. So I'm, I'm, I'm here because I'm interested in computer vision. Awesome. And the last person, uh, Alexei. Alex, can you hear us? Seems like he, he, he's not here. Um, all right, so uh, thanks everyone for joining in. Uh, very diverse and very, uh, I would say skillful um, group of individuals. Super excited to have everyone here. And the last person that we have on the list is Serhi. Not sure if he has good connection because uh, I think he's in mountains right now. But let's try. Yeah, let's check. Yeah, let's check. Uh, can you hear me well? Yeah. Okay, let me try the video then. Okay, I'm actually, Work. the Wi-Fi in my hotel is very bad, but I'm I connected using my phone. So looks like it's working. Awesome. So maybe you can actually give us a quick introduction because you're essentially the person that um, that kicked off this project by telling me that, hey, there is this Kaggle competition and we um, have some you know preliminary progress exploring computer vision models uh, for this uh, long exploration uh, use case. So maybe you can tell us just a quick introduction. Yeah, so first uh, 50 seconds introduction about myself. I have experience with uh, startups, uh, plenty of experience with uh, software engineering and machine learning. And uh, talking about the idea, yes, there is this uh, very hot and important topic in computer vision called uh, semi-supervised learning. When you, when you have a lot of data without labels, you train the model and then you train a really good basic model, general model that has a good understanding of the data, but doesn't uh, have a good understanding of some specific task, cannot perform some specific task, but using only a little labeled specific data set, we can train it and uh, achieve even better results uh, that were reported before, uh, improve state of the art in certain areas. Uh, yeah, by the way, it's not only related to computer vision it, it as a, uh, AI uh, areas, this is something that is very popular right now, especially in NLP, this is where it started. So the idea is, let's take, uh, we, uh, I did some research, uh, we have a lot of data available, let's say, for, let's start from lungs, for uh, CT scans of lungs. So what, it's just one uh, beautiful thing we can do, uh, is building, we can build the big metadata set of as a data set, we can train very good general model. Then we can, as a validation, we can participate in different challenges, including this one as the, as the first one, the Skaggle challenge. It's just a way of, validate, uh, of validating the theory, the, the approach. Uh, so the idea is to collect the big data set and to train the model in a semi-supervised way. It means we will train the model uh, in the super supervised way, but as labels, we are going to take auxiliary labels, labels generated automatically. That's uh, the way it works. Uh, there, is, uh, there is a new paper released, I believe by Google just recently. Uh, it's called CMCLR. Uh, it's just, it's an, it's an approach to train such models. And uh, I thought about reproducing this, this approach. So basically the impact here is if we do this and we train the model and we release this model in public, anyone in the world can use this model for any long related task. And we're going to release this model. Uh, the code uh, will, will be released as open source and uh, will be available like without commercial, without license constraint, like whether you want to use commercially or 
you want to use it in a commercial project. You can take our code or you can take the pre-chain model. Uh, so many interested, so many people here in the meeting. That's basic uh, idea of the project and uh, quick intro. Maybe you have questions. Yeah, that's a great point to, to start asking questions. I have a question. So, sorry, you mentioned this paper from, uh, or this model from Google. Um, like, firstly, I was wondering if you could provide a link maybe in the, uh, you know, the Slack. But um, secondly, so is this already um, like uh, some kind of framework that they built up that you, uh, you know, input the images and the labels and already work with it like at the framework level? Or is this simply an approach that they have detailed and then we would be like re-implementing the approach in like, uh, I don't know, PyTorch or TensorFlow or what, what have you? Uh, I'm not sure. I know the, I can give you the name of the uh, of the paper and also, uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's the project on Notion. And if you go to just a moment, I believe there is a folder called STEM supervised learning, and they're going to be referenced to yeah. So, but I will also send it to Slack right away. And then I think they published the code as well. So it's more like uh, tune it for our case and uh, put our data and start experimenting. We will have to revisit uh, the way they, they did it because the very basic idea of what they were doing is they are training the model to, 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 differenti to, to differentiate, um, to recognize the same image after this image has been augmented using different techniques. So basically, we're not using any smart label, any, how to say, target labels, like in our case, labels with diagnosis or uh, any information that we will want to predict in the future. We will take the data without any labels. And as a label, we will we will uh, we'll train the model to say this is the same image, but it was augmented. So basically, uh, I think it's chained as a triplet loss where we generate positive and negative uh, pairs. And then as negative pair, we take different images and augment them. And as positive pair, we take different augmentations of the same image. And then we train a triplet loss, uh, this model as a triplet loss uh, with, uh, with the goal to uh, distantiate like to, to, to maximize uh, dif the distance between uh, embeddings of the different augmentations of same image and embeddings of different image. So basically when the model can guess, then yes, it's the same image, image you just flipped it, you just uh, rotated it or cut it randomly. At this point, model smart enough and we can uh, uh, we can use these embeddings we can attach to correctly classify I don't know cats versus the uh, medical domain does it make sense yes that does thank you yeah and uh, just uh, why I'm why I pointed this out is we'll have to like first thing that we'll totally have to review is set of augmentations because what did uh, very good in their case uh, this paper by Google is random crop which uh, I I can understand so why it works on the images where we want it, some, it, where we want to classify it, something like cats yeah okay sure uh, so what they reported that The, the best augmentation that worked in their it works well good with when we have a task of uh, classifying cats versus dogs or planes versus 
cars because if you take a random crop of a plane, you still, as a human, can see yeah, this is probably from the from the plane. Or you take a random crop from the dog, and you can see it's the dog. But when you have one image, two uh, D image of the lung. And we take random crop from left side and random crop from right side. Even the person cannot say if this are random crops from the same person from the same slice. So we'll have to find different augmentation techniques. But the idea is same. We take different. Uh, COVID-19 diagnosis, semi-supervised way, and they can perform and can, can boost in this Kaggle challenge, take they, they this target task. Does it make sense? Yeah, I, I, you were breaking up a little bit, but it makes sense. We, we have to do some preliminary uh, kind of data exploration, I think, at, at this stage. Yes. Just to understand what, what kind of uh, data sets we're dealing with. So maybe that could be the, the first uh, step for us to work through um, mm -hmm. in the next couple of days. And I also wanted to elaborate on these steps. Uh, like the question is, uh, do we need the whole image to detect the disease? Or maybe there are some dark parts that are responsible for it. So is there any way to pre-process the image and to help the later classifier show that this, that this part of the image is responsible for the disease? And we can uh, like, eliminate all the other parts. Yes, something like with segmentation mask, right? Build a model that can segment the lungs and then we can extract only the part which is, uh, which, which is, I believe it's called parenteal uh, tissue. Only those tissues that, is, that, that make sense for us. Yeah, this is something we can investigate. Uh, yeah, so uh, I... But, Go ahead, Bogdan. Hi, Randall. I'm going to have to step away for a minute. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, I think Bogdan, the idea that something? of segmentation will, is probably a good way for us to uh, <laughs> kind of improve not just the accuracy but the focus of what we're uh, trying to look for and maybe people like you know the people was more of a, a biotech experience or the the actual you know physicians um i understand that that's not your uh kind of like expertise but maybe you can give some more direction in in this area because obviously we as computer vision uh specialists or data scientists we have no clue what what to look for really so in this regard i have a point over here so what happens with the age fibrosis happens a lot so sometimes it's an age determined factor so we need to have some confounding factors into consideration while segmenting these images so those points also need to be considered uh, in the data set that's what i feel uh sorry can you repeat please i didn't get it so what happens uh, over the time being that uh, with age, fibrosis happen. The people who are very aged, they might have more fibrosis. So the okay. image, so from where that image is coming up, what is the age group of the patients, whether they were smokers or not smokers, all those confounding factors need to be considered while doing, doing segmentation of those images. So kind of like metadata um, for, for a specific granularity of the diagnosis, right? That's true, that's right. Got it. Uh, so can you please, uh, yes, yeah, so can you please like uh, post some images on the channel and uh, describe those, <laughs> those parts of the image to look for? Because in words, I understand 
it from the description, but if I see the photo, I would not be able to recognize like to which part of the lung should I look for. So what so, I can do in the next meeting, I can make a presentation on this aspect. That would be amazing. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Uh, what what days times work for you? I am fine. It, it depends on the whole group. Uh, I'll, I'll try to arrange my timing accordingly. Uh, does this time work for you in, in general? Yeah, uh, noon is good because it's a lunch hours. Yeah, good. Okay, so... The same hour is that we have right now is also good for me. Awesome. So maybe we can schedule a call for, um, let's say, 10 o'clock Monday. Uh, can you make it I around noon? Not, noon? I will not make it on Monday, but I can try to join you. Yeah, Tuesday should be good. Uh, Sequinder, can, can you do Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday would be fine. Yeah. Perfect. So we'll just schedule that right after this meeting. I think that will be a, a, a very helpful uh, presentation for all of us non-medical people to better understand what exactly we, we should be working on. Okay, thank you. I'll try to put whatever I can do, but uh, I am also a biologist, not a, a histopathologist, but it will be helpful for all of us. I feel that way. Absolutely. All right, we still have five minutes. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? Uh, I can ask one question about the, how we are gonna work with the data and where we are gonna get the processing power. Uh, like I know it's a Kaggle competition and then Kaggle provides uh, free resources. But it's uh, limited. Yeah, yeah, it's and limited, it is not enough. Yeah, uh, so uh, we are fortunate uh, to to have uh, received another chunk of cloud computing credits uh, from uh, donors. So we can create uh, specific accounts and virtual machines on Google Cloud and Amazon uh, for anyone that needs more computing power. Um, Anton will be the person that will be distributing the, the access. So you can ping him. And I'll, I'll let Anton quickly introduce how the process works. Yeah, so we'll probably start with something like, bef like uh, since we're talking about computer vision, probably people would like to jump immediately to some GPU processing power, etc. For that, we don't have enough resources in terms of donations. So probably the project will be next. First, you you need to like. You do some toy example, right? Just kind of like to see that the pipeline works and Kaggle already has, I think, pretty good inputs in terms of GPU, TPU power. If not, Google Collab definitely has TPU, GPUs. And then when that is not enough, right? We, we essentially kind of like figuring out like what, what the, the good experiment in terms of effectiveness of, of use of costs and then we just set up, run it, uh, and see how it goes. But eventually what I think would happen is, since we, again, we have plenty of people on the call, we probably at this point have a lot of ideas for, for different experiments. At some point we'll come up and converge to some interesting model to use, et cetera. And for that, we will need to apply even for more donations or like seek compute funding for that to, to run some, some big training jobs. So, so far we're not, unfortunately we're not in the position to be kind of like, oh, we have lots of donations. We could run like plenty of training jobs, but we're in a good position to start as a, as a Kaggle competition for sure. So uh, definitely find me on Slack, Anton Polishko is, is, is my name. So Anton P, I think my Slack name is. So just pin me and we'll start conversation what, what computational power you think you need and then we'll come up with the plan of you know, how to make sure we're not just wasting yeah. credits. Is on. everyone here uh, on our Slack? Just to make sure that, um, because uh, we've experienced some people um, never receiving the link. So I want to make sure that everyone has access to Slack. 
if you don't have access, uh, just let me know. I'll send you details. Oh, another thing, like uh, since we're talking about like this uh, housekeeping stuff, we'll probably do a GitHub team for this. So let's definitely also get added to, to GitHub team for, for, for this one. Uh, I'll, I'll make a post in the Slack channel and then just ask for all the people's uh, account, go GitHub account names and then we'll have a place to collaborate as well. Perfect. Sounds like a plan. Is the, all right. is, this, is the Slack and, channel, can I ask, is the Slack channel the CoronaWise Slack channel or is it a separate? Slack yeah, yeah, it's CoronaWise one and okay. there is a channel, oh, let me add you to it. It's called Team uh, Pulmonary, Fibro uh, Pulmonary Fibrosis Model. I'm going to add you to it real quick. By the way, if uh, any of you have uh, more technical questions or some ideas, feel free to approach me on Slack or, or ask it in the chat in, in this. Yeah, channel is preferred. Just for so, uh, people can, uh, you know, see and potentially we have so many different people that they can jump in mm -hmm. and just answer the question on the spot. Since we deal with different time zones, some people are from different countries and may not available uh, to answer right away, but other people may help. So highly recommend using the, the public channel that we have, which is the team pulmonary fibro fibrosis model. And um, yeah, just ping me if, if you can find it and I'll make sure that you're in there. Awesome. This, this has been amazing. Um, just the, the convergence of different people of different backgrounds. And it seems like we had this unutilized potential of computer vision specialists just waiting for Colonel Y to finally have a, an applicable project. So super excited. And thanks everyone for jumping in today. Um, stay healthy, stay sane, and we'll touch base on Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific. And we'll expect the presentation uh, by Sequinder and we'll, we'll go from there. Sounds good. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.